Right, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Uh, this should be the last of my vodcasts for a short while, and I want to just cover something that links together two things we've already seen, which is reflection and refraction, and the topic is called total internal reflection. Keywords are above my head. The two things I want to cover today are I want to explain what total internal reflection actually is, uh, and then we'll cover something called the critical angle. And then I'm afraid there's a new equation uh, that links uh, refractive index N and C, which is the critical angle. Incidentally, I, I think it's wrong that the IGS that, that Cambridge calls uh, critical angle C because we've already seen the letter C used to designate the speed of light. Um, but we're stuck with it. So th this is the symbol that Cambridge uses for critical angle, which is small c. Okay, so let's move on and I will try to explain what total internal reflection is. Well, basically you can see it on the screen here. This is a glass block. Um, it's got a curved surface. I'll explain why in a minute. But it's just an ordinary glass or perspex block. We're shining light in this direction. It's going through the first surface of the glass block. And when it hits the second surface, the boundary between the glass and the ur on this side, instead of refracting, it's reflecting. Uh, all of the light is re reflecting internally, so therefore we call this total internal reflection. And the reason why that's happening is because we're shining light at a particular angle that is bigger than the critical angle for glass. And therefore, rather than getting refraction, we get reflection. Or total internal reflection. All right, let me explain that a bit better with a series of diagrams here. Okay, so the yellow line is light that's heading into the glass block just as we saw before. Now because this surface is curved, um, what that means is, I'll get my pen, the light is actually hitting the glass block at the normal line. Can't really see it very well. But the normal line will be a dotted line there. Uh, the good thing about the, the curved surface is no matter where you shine light on the curved surface, it will always, always be directly along the normal. And if light is shining along the normal, it means the angle of incidence is zero degrees, which means the angle of refraction is zero degrees. So what that means is you're not, you won't get any refraction at the first surface. The only time you'll get refraction or reflection will be when it hits the second surface which is the straight line. All right, let me show you uh, a few more lines. These are more angles of incidence hitting the first surface, and for each one of these, the normal line is directly along the ray of light, so therefore the angle of incidence is zero degrees. We're getting no refraction at the first surface. But in any case, we're not really interested in what happens at the first surface, we're interested in what happens at the second surface here. So let me show you that. Uh, and some more diagrams. Okay, so now we've increased the angle of incidence here uh, away from the, the center. We've increased it, so therefore it's hitting the second uh, uh, the second surface between glass and air at a particular angle, and we can call that angle, as you know, here we can call that an angle of incidence. Because we've got an angle of incidence, we've also got an angle of refraction, as we've seen on previous videos. Um, it's no different, it's just that this is, a, instead of being a rectangular block, this is a semicircular block of glass. So we've got incident angle, angle of refraction. Um, let's increase the angle of incidence a bit more. So we move. Uh, uh, the angle of incident, we move the, sorry, the ray of light round, downwards in this case, so we increase the angle of incidence. The angle of incidence increases and so does the angle of refraction. And if you do this for real, probably what you'll also see here is a very thin ray of light that's being reflected. It's not total internal reflection because most of the light is still being refracted here rather than being reflected here. Okay, we increase the angle of incidence a bit more. 
and the angle of refraction increases even more. And then we increase it even more. And now we're getting to the point where we're actually, we seem to be getting close to the critical angle because the refracted ray is almost hitting the edge of the glass itself. So let's increase it by a few more degrees. Let's increase the angle of incidence by a few more degrees. And at this point, you can see the refracted, refracted ray, sorry, is now skimming along the boundary between the air uh, and the glass. Um, some of the light is being refracted, some of the light is being reflected. So we've not reached total internal reflection, but we've reached the critical angle. Because if we increase this angle of incidence by one more degree or less than one more degree, this will flip so that we won't have any refracted light, we'll only have reflected light. And at that point, we've got total internal reflection. So we've reached the critical angle. Uh, so I'll just increase the angle of incidence by one more degree and I'll show you what happens. At that point, all of the light is being reflected. We've reached total internal reflection and we've gone beyond the critical angle. This angle of incidence is now greater than the critical angle. Okay, now hopefully in a few weeks we'll do this for real so you can see it uh, in reality. Um, but that's basically the experiment that shows you total internal reflection. Let me go back one more slide. So we'll decrease the angle of incidence just to the point where the refract refracted ray is skimming along that boundary between glass and air. We've got the critical angle. So now let's look at this, um, at this equation. So the equation is N refractive index equals 1 divided by the sine of the critical angle. Now I know that the, the refractive index for glass is approximately N equals approximately 1.4. And you remember that n has no units because it's an index. It's just a ratio of, of uh, light speeds. So therefore, uh, no unit. So if you know the refractive index is 1.4, we should be able to work out what is the critical angle for this piece of glass. All right, let's substitute in the numbers. n is 1.4 equals 1 over sine c. So therefore, sine c equals 1 divided by 1.4. Okay, this is the point where you get your trusty Casio pocket calculator out of your pocket. I've got mine here. 1 divided by 1.4 is 0 0.714 to three significant figures. That's not the critical angle, that's the sine of the critical angle. So therefore, in order to find the critical angle C, we need to do the inverse sine of 0.714, shift, sine, and according to my trusty Casio pocket calculator, the answer is 50.6. Which seems about right for me. Answers on a postcard if I've got that wrong. Okay. Um, now, obviously, there's links here between reflection and refraction, and I will put uh, links above my head here. That you can click uh, to go back to those previous videos. Um, you also need to be aware that maybe there's a chance in some questions in the exams they'll link n here, maybe back to the n that we saw in. Snell's law. So make sure that you understand this equation and you understand the equation for Snell's law in refraction. Okay, that's about it. I just thought I'd finish with a, a few words about why this uh, might be useful. You might think, fair enough, it's just light reflecting in a piece of glass. Does it have any practical purpose? And it's actually of huge significance in many kinds of modern technology. Probably the most useful um, is fiber optics, which you can see here. These are fiber optic cables. Uh, now let me explain very, very quickly, uh, and probably unsatisfactorily how they work. So 
Uh, fiber optic cables are very thin, but if you could look down the bore of a fiber optic cable, they're not hollow, they're made of onion, it looks like an onion skin of different layers of glass wrapped around each other. And basically each of those layers has a different refractive index. So therefore, when you shine light down a fiber optic cable, um, it can't escape because it will always um, hit a piece of glass with a refractive index N that will be uh, suitable to cause total internal reflection. So any light that, that flows, that, that uh, presses down a fiber optic cable will bounce uh, from the edges back to the center and back again and back to again. It moves in zigzags along the fiber optic cable. It can never really escape. That's not quite true. You'll always lose some light, but um, most of the light will always be totally internally reflected. And if you change the light uh, into pulses of light, you can create digital signals, ones and zeros, that you can pass digital information. So possibly you're looking at me now on this video uh, and I'm being brought to you along a fiber optic cable through flashes of light that's causing a digital signal. <clears throat> All right, second use, uh, this is a periscope. I know that on my video about reflection, I suggested you could make a periscope using two mirrors, um, which you can, um, but they wouldn't be very good, um, very good periscopes because it's very hard to make very good plain mirrors and some of the light will always be scattered on the surface of the mirror. Much better, therefore, to use a triangular prism and you can totally, inter uh, totally internally reflect the light on this first prism and do the same here. And you can ensure that pretty much all of the light that's coming in here will reach the eye down there. So they're very, very high quality periscopes and binoculars, actually, they're used in binoculars. And finally, something I hope you never have to see in your lifetime, this is a medical endoscope. And you can basically use the same idea, fiber optic cables. You can pass light down this tube, it will reflect and pass back and the doctor will put their eye uh, to the eyepiece here uh, and I'll leave to your imagination where this, uh, where this tube might go. It might go down into your body or it might go up into your body so the doctor can see um, if there's anything wrong with your insides. Okay, um, so that's total internal reflection. Let's just have a look at the keywords again before we finish. I hope I've explained sufficiently what total internal reflection is and the reason why we normally use a semicircular glass block to see it in the lab. I tried to explain what the critical angle is. It's got the symbol small c. And then we looked at an example of use of this equation, refractive index equals one divided by the sine of the critical angle. Okay, um, please send me any comments you'd like on the on YouTube or on the Google Classroom when I post this. Um, like I said, it's probably the last one in a while. So take care of yourselves and your families in the meantime until I see you again. And I hope that's going to be fairly soon. Okay, uh, goodbye then everybody.